Hi everybody, this is um, Dr. Paul Magarelli from uh, CNY Fertility Colorado. Welcome to our Tuesday sojourn into medicine, science, and questions that need to be answered. Uh, usually, hi everybody, Mrs. Roebuck, uh, Carista. Uh, usually it's going to be a, a totally a question and answer session, but I was going to finish up my last week's talk on IVF triggers. Hello, Maish Kultur. Watsniks, Quith Kroche, Ira Mintz, Jennifer Raymond, hello. Meg Burris, Kaylin06, hello. Kate La joined, Purely Root Nutrition, hello. Now, I am going to be doing a uh, uh, the end of my lecture on uh, Instagram and, uh, uh, I'm sorry, on, um, on Facebook and YouTube. Um, you can probably listen to it. You may not, you may want to jump over and look at the slides. Hello, Frims 200, Self Love 31. Hello, Cassandra Stevens 3399. Hello. Uh, so, as I said, hello, Angela. Hello from Texas. Welcome, Sherry Lynn Rick Quiel Rice. Hello, nice to see you. Uh, so, I'm going to be talking about the second half of our uh, discussion on IVF triggers. Let me make this a little bit bigger for you here. Um, let me just tell my doctor there that I'm on live right now, which I am. <laughs> and uh, again, all you folks who want to jump over to uh, Facebook Live or to YouTube, I'm going to talk for about 20 minutes, not more, because this really is a question and answer session. Uh, but I felt compelled. I, you know, I wanted to finish up the IVF triggers, and this way you have it. Hello from Georgia, Lily Leal. Nice to see you. Sherry Lynn, I said hi. Courtney Horton. And then Courtney Joe Live. How's that for two Courtneys in a row? Uh, Paris Katie, hello. Um, Bridget McGlenn, hello. Um, so I'm going to be answering quite oh, It's raining in, uh, in Georgia. It's a rainy night in Georgia. Well, it's a beautiful, sunny, gorgeous, as you can see behind me a little bit, day here in Colorado, warm. It's about 72, if you can believe it out there. Uh, this is winter in Colorado. Very strange. Hello, Sartaske. And it uh, looks like a bunch of people are jumping up. Hello from Florida, Machina. And Charles Munyako Muzunga Lubato from New York. Well, there's a lot of, there's a lot of names there. Hello. Um, and hello, Jebs and Beauty and Bold. Um, whoa, hits Candace. Whoa, hits Candace. And Maibi87, Erica Lee, hello, hello. Um, and everybody here, hello, Melissa, Kelly, hello from Texas. Okay, so oh, I'll just talk for about three more minutes until everybody joins. If you guys want to watch the lecture, it's going to be on Facebook Live, and it's also going to be on YouTube Live. Uh, you can hear me on this side uh, also uh, after the short lecture. I will uh, talk, uh, I'll do questions and answers for the rest of the session. Like I said, I'm going to go through it very quickly. It's already been recorded, the first half of it last week, but there were some really important things I wanted to talk about this week. Uh, I'm going to give it a couple of two more minutes. Um, so I'm going to answer a few questions while I'm waiting, but about 4.05, I'm going to start answering questions. Lily, 48 years old, do I have some hope to have a baby? Well, uh, the answer is you always have hope, but what we can do is check your eggs, check your husband's sperm, check the uterus, and it's all about eggs. So if you have eggs, we can certainly try, and even if you don't, we can do a donor egg. Rebecca, is Lupron as effective at presenting OHSS? Uh, 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 is Lupron as effective as preventing OHSS of you dual trigger? Rebecca, restate that. Sean, hello, you did my transfer yesterday. El Dorado was my embryo. I had a wonderful experience. Oh, I'm so happy. As everybody knows, I love to name the embryos, but I use really, really, really off the wall names. Uh, do you recommend PRP? Uh, yes, I do for ovarian, a low ovarian reserve. I'm going to be doing a talk on it, which I promised, and I will. I'm still working on it. Um, Almost at 4.05, uh, Beanie joined, Kendall Lynn joined. If you guys are on Instagram and you want to watch me on uh, Facebook Live or YouTube, I'm going to talk about IVF triggers. Yes, uh, Melody, I'm in the uh, Colorado office along with Dr. Fink. Uh, we have a uh, Igioma, Sofina, Noakuku uh, from San Francisco. Hello. 
It's Maureen and Will from Miami. You did a retrieval. Yes, hi. I hope you're feeling well, Maureen and Will. We are loving Colorado, Jasmine. I'm so glad. How common is off and on bleeding in early pregnancy? Very common. Um, uh, let's see. Okay, so I have about 6.05. So what we're going to do is I'm going to jump into my talk. Guys who are on Instagram, jump over for a short period of time to Facebook Live uh, or... Um, or uh, YouTube, and we'll talk about triggers. I'm gonna get my head out of the picture here so you can um, see this. So I'm gonna review very quickly what IVF triggers are, and then then we'll uh, answer some questions, okay? I talked about that follicles take 150 days to be called into action in the body, and the last 90 days um, uh, is when they begin to get sensitive to uh, the, the hormones that we give you. In a natural cycle, you'll see that uh, one egg develops and ovulates. Uh, in, a, in an IVF cycle, we give medications to get many, many eggs to develop and, and stop it from ovulating so that we can get the eggs out. The way we uh, get a cycle uh, together is we, we, we time it, and then we use either Lupron or uh, Ganarelix or Citratide to control it. We then give you medications uh, and then give you what's called a trigger. And the trigger is HCG in most cases, but today we can also give a Lupron trigger. So we have two major, and by the way, I'm going through this fast because I went through this last week. So this is a review only so I can get to the last couple of slides. So it, there are two major protocols that we use, a GNRH antagonist protocol with Ganarelix or uh, Citratide. And then the GNRH agonist protocols are sometimes called long Lupron or flare protocols. And the, the, the difference only is in how we control the body from ovulating. We also have words like mini IVF and conventional IVF, and I've done talks on mini and, and conventional. What you could think of as a mini IVF uses oral medications and injectables, and it uses a lot less injectable medications, so it saves a lot of money. And conventional IVF, we don't use oral medications, we use injectable medications. And those injectable medications are at higher doses with the hope that we get as many uh, eggs as possible. But what you notice in all of them, that we use a trigger. And in, in, uh, in the mini and in, also in the conventional, we use HCG as a trigger. Now, what we have learned about the trigger is that it is important to do the final maturation, getting the egg competent for fertilization. It's required. So that trigger in nature is LH. In IVF, it's HCG or Lupron. And in some experimental areas, it's called Kiss peptide is also another way to do it. But the, but the reason we do it is to make the egg able to be fertilized by the sperm and prepare the egg so that it floats within the follicle so we can suck it out with IVF. So when we give that trigger, whether it's LH or HCG or Lupron, uh, that we what we're asking is for the nucleus of the, uh, the oocyte to mature, to get ready for fertilization. It has to do a uh, go from diploid to haploid. In other words, it has twice as many chromosomes that it needs for fertilization to occur. So it divides down into a polar body and the oocyte. And the oocyte has half the nuclear information to make a person. And of course, the sperm has the other half. And M2, you hear that when you do IVF, how many M1s, M2s, germinal vesicles we have? Well, germinal vesicles and M1s are immature. They can't fertilize. Whereas the uh, mature follicles, the M2 uh, oocytes, the M2, are the only ones that can take a sperm. So that is critical that we, we get the LH, the HCG, the Lupron, or the Kiss peptide to mature that um, particular uh, egg. So here you see, again, this is a quick review because I did this whole lecture last week, but I want to get to some new stuff, okay? So there is a compound called Kiss peptide, which tells the hypothalamus to re release GnRH, which is the gonadotropin releasing hormone, which releases LH and FSH into the bloodstream, which allows the ovary to be triggered or the oocyte to be mature. You can give Lupron, which is a GnRH agonist and does this, the same thing, short circuiting the hypothalamus, or you can actually give the HCG or, or recombinant LH 
and again, mature, mature the uh, oocyte, making it competent. So this LH surge in nature is duplicated by either recombinant LH, HCG, Lupron, or Kispeptide with the goal of maturing and getting this oocyte to be able to be extracted and to change the corpus, the, uh, the uh, growing follicle into a corpus luteum. Again, this is review. Now, um, how come we can trigger with LH? Well, we re- I'm sorry, with HCG. Well, the reason we can trigger with HCG instead of LH is because if you look at the molecular structure, LH and HCG, the only difference is in the beta protein. The alpha proteins are the same, but the beta proteins are slightly different, but they're so similar, like this N group here, is similar enough to activate the receptor um, that's in the uh, uh, follicle that allows it to go through that last step, which is something very interesting is that the alpha subunit is also the same alpha subunit in TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, the pregnancy hormone HCG, and follicle stimulating hormone. So we as scientists mess around with these things to be able to make things happen. Well, why can we make How can we make, uh, why can Lupron, which is a GNRH agonist, uh, work like um, uh, as a trigger? Well, the only time that you can use a Lupron trigger is if you're doing an antagonist cycle with Ganorelix or Citratide. The reason is, is because you can't give Lupron to suppress a cycle and give Lupron to stimulate a trigger. So by having a cycle suppressed by these Ganorelix or Citratide, then the Lupron its first response is to act like GnRH and make the the, uh, pituitary gland secrete LH, which is the natural trigger. So that's how you can use Lupron as a trigger. The the thing though that people need to understand, and this is the second, when we get to the second part of this lecture, you'll understand why this is important, is even though they do the same thing, which is trigger the final step of maturation, they do LH and HCG do this dramatically different. As you can see here, LH is secreted, there's a burst, but boy, does it disappear really quickly. Whereas HCG is a burst, but boy, does it hang around, it can hang around, you know, anywhere at four or five days. If you look at the natural LH surge here in the blue, you see this sort of, um, a mountain-shaped curve of secretion over 48 hours. If you look at the Lupron, it's a spike and then disappears. But if you look at HCG, it does that sort of square box, but boy, does it last up to six days. So even though they do similar things, they have properties that we can use to the advantage of our patients. So I mentioned that you can use recombinant LH. It's called Luveris from Serono but we tend not to see that in the market. It's very expensive and also it takes a lot of medicine. So people don't really use that very much. Again, what I'm showing you here is the major difference between a Lupron trigger and a natural LH trigger. I've already shown you that even with an HCG trigger, this is even more different. How come we can use KISS peptide? Well, the reason we can use KISS peptide is it tells the hypothalamus to produce GNRH. So the GnRH is then stimulatory to the pituitary gland to release um, the the LH, which is your trigger. So we don't really see that in in the market today, but that's where it it would work is at the level of the hypothalamus. So this is where we ended last time. And that is what about dual triggers, double triggers, double dose triggers, oh my. Now a lot, I, I tell this to you folks many times that there's words like mini IVF. It's not anything, it's not, a, it's not a thing. It's a name someone gave a thing, which is sometimes misinterpreted. Well, a dual trigger, <coughs> excuse me, a dual trigger is you give two different types of triggers. Why? Because they have different properties. As I said, the Lupron trigger is immediate, strong, hard. The HCG trigger is long, lengthy. So especially if you're doing a fresh cycle, that HCG trigger will also stimulate progesterone formation in the corpus luteum, which will contribute to implantation. So a dual trigger uses two different mechanisms to make sure we get as many mature eggs as possible. Now, some folks do what they call double triggers, which they give two doses of the same trigger. I guess that's okay. 
Uh, some authors also called HEG and Lupron a double trigger. I guess that's okay. But the point is you're using the same type of trigger twice. So you're shooting, in the first one, you're shooting a gun and a bazooka. That's your dual trigger. In the second one, you're shooting a gun twice. Now, in the double dose triggers, and this, of course, is a bunch, bunch of um, gobbledygook we make up, is that's where you give twice as much of the HCG as you do um, in, in the other in the other uh, 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 treatment triggers. The thought being there that you may, and again, uh, this is how the how we did this in the past. Um, in we you the thought being that as, as for some folks, especially folks who have high BMIs they may need additional medication in order for them to be able to trigger. Right now, there aren't a lot of data saying one is better than the other. As a matter of fact, in this paper by, by uh, Abara, they did not find any difference in the numbers of oocytes, mature oocytes, zygotes, or impl implantation rates. However, they did find an increase in the pregnancy rates when GNRH was used along with HCG. So that second or different property, it didn't numerically increase the number of eggs, but somehow it improved pregnancy rates. It's a very small study. I'm not convinced it was um, uh, better. Now, how do we know when to trigger? Well, in a natural cycle, it's 32 hours after the LH is secreted. That's when ovulation occurs, and that's when you'll, you, you see it after this trigger. In 90% of women, they'll ovulate between 16 and 48 hours and between 3 to 36 hours after the peak LH. Uh, Berkowitz et al. said that the 35-hour sweet spot is the, is the spot for us to plan in, in IVF. In other words, if you get your trigger at 10 p.m., then you can get your eggs out at 9 a.m. a day and a half later or 35 hours later. Easy way to remember it. So someone says, give you a trigger at 10 p.m., then you know that you're planned IVF retrieval is 9 a.m. a day and a half later. However, don't worry about it because they found that, uh, this is Nargun found, that anywhere from 33 to 41 hours. So we have a little bit of wiggle room when we do retrievals in terms of uh, the time to, to get the eggs out. Beyond 41 hours, now we have a problem. So that would mean like you took your trigger at 10 p.m., and now it's 5 p.m. and we're doing your retrieval a day and a half later. Too much time, too much time. So we kind of keep it into that 35-hour window. What about how big should the follicles be when you trigger? Well, pretty much 17 to 18 millimeters in mean diameter is about the right width of the follicle mean diameter in the follicle that you would expect to find a mature egg. Follicles in the 16 to 22 millimeter range, uh, those are the ones that are most likely to give you oocytes that you can use. So do not believe that just simply because you have a follicle that there's an egg that's viable or there's an egg that will be able to be fertilized. That is not likely to be true. Even in 20-year-olds, 70% 70 of the follicles will have eggs that are, that are able to be used, whereas older, there may be fewer. And certainly, if your if your follicle sizes are less than 14 millimeters, or in this uh, study it mentioned 16 millimeters, it's not likely to yield an egg that's going to make a baby. We still go for them, but it's not likely to yield an egg that's going to make a baby. What about the impact of progesterone production after the ACG or LH? Well, what they found is way back when, 40 years ago, was that. If you did IVF and you did not supplement with progesterone, the trigger was not enough and the follicles were dysfunctional enough so that they did not produce the progesterone adequate to allow for normal pregnancies. So it is critical, critical that our patients continue and take progesterone very specifically as we have, we planned it uh, for you because it is critical for you to be able to get implantation. So what is the best trigger to prevent ovarian hyperstimulation? It's the GNRH antagonist protocol, Ganarelix, um, 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 or Citratide, and using Lupron 
Lupron, Lupron to trigger. Do not use HCG to trigger because it's like adding gasoline to a fire. So in those cases where you're hyperstimulating, absolutely, you should get one trigger, which is Lupron. How do we come up with the doses needed? Well, back in 1997, they did a bunch of studies on monkeys. They found how much was needed. Uh, and then the human studies have found that 5,000 is the minimum effective dose, anywhere between 4,000 and 6,000. If the BMI is high, over 30, or certainly over 40, then you absolutely want to consider increasing that dose and also ensuring that you do it in the deltoid muscle. Uh, folks, anybody whose BMI is in the 40 or 50 range, you know, please consider asking if you can have your medications in your deltoid. It just is an easy way to get to the muscles and it can save you a lot of money on, on medications and it may, you may stimulate quite dramatically better. So BMI plays a role in that. Now, there's a whole bunch of GNRH preparations. They all do different things. But the point here is the half-life of the medications, HCG being the longest, recombinant LH a little longer. Um, GNRH, like Lupron trigger, sh sh very short, and Kiss peptide even shorter. So the point of it was in the uh, 13 ways they looked to create ovulation, the different protocols, they really didn't find any differences. So... This Remember I mentioned that the uh, HCG and LH, although they do the same thing, don't have the same response. Well, LH and HCG are very similar. About 85% of the beta unit is similar, but HCG does not activate the LH receptor in the same way as LH does. It binds differently, binds and stays there longer, higher risk for ovarian hyperstimulation. HCG not only supports the developing embryo, but the decidua, the thing that, that holds the, um, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the pregnancy in place. Uh, Lupron versus a natural LH trigger, we find only two phases rather than the three phases of secretion in a natural phase. So it is slightly different. Not necessarily bad, it's just slightly different. And then when you give Lupron, not only do you get LH, but you get some FSH. So in some circumstances, that may be helpful. Uh, today, we can get recombinant uh, HCG, or we can also get urinary HCG. They, you know, they're just dose and they're slightly different. Um, but the, 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 um, the, the recombinant in one study suggested you got two additional zygotes, which is embryos that are cleaved. But also they noted that ovarian hyperstimulation went up more dramatically when you use the recombinant. We use them interchangeably and they work just fine as long as you know what you're doing. What is the impact of the HCG on pregnancy rates? A single study suggested that you may get a better outcome if you use the recombinant HCG versus the uh, natural HCG, but many, many studies say, nah, we don't think that's true. So the take home message, and again, I tried to get this as quickly as possible. This is recorded so you guys can, uh, can uh, review it. Anything that causes a surge in LH or duplicates the function of LH can be a trigger for the final maturation of the oocyte prior to retrieval. That's the critical thing that we're, we're, we're trying to do with these medications. All trigger protocols in IVF work regardless of the mode and the type. There are dual triggers, double triggers, double dose triggers, and they're chosen for very specific patients, okay? I tend to use uh, the uh, dual trigger, two different mechanisms to fertilize the egg rather than a, sin a single mechanism. Uh, and then, as I said, CMY usually uses the Lupron and the ACG triggers. So I know that was a very quick run through. This is recorded. I just wanted to finish the talk. Um, I, know, I know there's a lot of um, information in there, but I'm building a library for you all so that every aspect of what you're involved with, you can kind of listen to me talk about it and kind of learn about it. Anyway, with having said all that wonderful thing, um, here's a question, Jennifer, should I be doing Omni in the deltoid with a high BMI, Omnitrope? Absolutely. Um, okay, so we're ready to rock and roll with questions about this topic or any topic. Uh, thanks for listening in. I'm Dr. Magarelli from CMY Fertility Colorado. 
uh, happy to help along with Dr. Fink and my wonderful nurse practitioner, Brandis. We're all here with 50 other people to help you. Um, so what, which medication do you recommend in the deltoid for in, increased BMI? All your meds. Any meds that you put in the skin, you can put in the deltoid. Had a consultation yesterday trying to decide whether to do IUI first or go straight to mini IVF. I'm 35, low ovarian reserve, PCOS. Any thoughts on which path is better? IVF of any sort. Does the protocol change when you only have one ovary? Absolutely not. Uh, can you opt into transferring two embryos on the first cycle? No. Uh, you asked me that before, uh, Self Love 31, uh, especially if you're younger than 30. For PCOS uh, with an AMH of 7, age 34, trying for a fresh transfer, what trigger is best? It would be Lupron only. Lupron only. Um, what is uh, Lily Leo? I don't know what you're answering. Okay. so she's, Oh, she's also 48. Yes. Fresh transfer is more successful or frozen. They're, they're the same, but you have to choose the right one for the patient. In other words, in the right patient, they're the same. In the wrong patient, of course, they wouldn't. When would a medical a medicated cycle be better for an FET than a modified natural cycle? Brianna Barker Groth, I am now preparing a lecture specifically on modified or natural cycles. Stay tuned. What's the best protocol for endometriosis? I'm 42 years young. Uh, there are no such thing as protocols for endometriosis. It has based on your egg. Um, I am here, Lily Leal. Hi, okay. Did my egg retrieval yesterday had a freeze then due to high estrogen? I had 21 eggs, six. Wow, wow. I'm at risk for OHS. Is that a good fertilization and mature embryos? Kind of Osborne. Oh my God, that's great. How does vitamin D affect IVF outcomes? Low vitamin D levels are low, associated with low um, outcomes. Evelyn, my embryos generated on day five. They didn't give any option to transfer on day three. Is there a good protocol that I can do to help my chances, Evelyn? Well, then simply ask to be transferred on day three. Will a double vagina require two IVF cycles? No. I am listening to you very closely. Okay, good. If you have a 25 BMI but a high percentage of fat, do you recommend injections in the deltoid? Yes. There's no downside, folks, to putting it in the deltoid. Nothing. What are the differences in patients for fresh versus frozen? Two, their PCOS patients do better with frozen. Ovarian hyperstimulation patients always do frozen. Uh, advanced maternal age should do fresh. Kind of Osborne. So can I opt out of PIO and only take Prometrium? No, not at all. You never want to opt out of PIO. Is DHEA recommended for women over 40 years? And I don't, I don't know who's recommending it. I don't. Um, okay. So da, da, da. All right. For that, I knocked you down there pretty quickly with questions. Let me get my water in here. Hello, kisses. At one point, should a twin pregnancy graduate from CNY? Eight to 10 weeks. In what cases do you recommend um, PGT testing? I don't know what PGE is, but PGT testing in patients who have chromosomal abnormalities or if you're trying to select a certain sex or in patients between 35 and 40 who've had failed basic IVF or in patients who have recurrent pregnancy loss unexplained. Uh, Jen Lynn, 38, doing IVF, no known fertility issues for me. However, my husband count is low. Is there a high success rate for women like me? Yes, of course. If it's only a sperm issue or a tube issue, IVF is the treatment of choice, folks. I mean, it really increases your chance. And hello, Pippi Kling 7. Is frozen donor egg transfer okay for 45 year old? Sure. What's the protocol of a frozen transfer such as meds? Uh, to, I'm sorry, <laughs> yeah, that's too broad a question. Just had a failed retrieval, was sent to New York uh, with two, uh, had a failed retrieval, was sent to New York with two follicles. With my next retrieval, how many eggs should I have before flying somewhere for transfer? Embryos, embryos. You wanna have at least four chromosomally normal embryos uh, or three chromosomally normal embryos before you start transferring. What is the difference between mini IVF and regular IVF self-love? That's the uh, dose, the dose of the medications that you use, that's all. So in mini, you use less 
medication, therefore less eggs, therefore less embryos, therefore not as many choices. Do you recommend donor eggs yet to fail three IVFs on 42? Yes. Can trigger affect empty follicle syndrome? It might. There's some data about that. So you definitely want to do a double trigger if, you, if there's any doubt about that. Um, I had my retrieval on Friday with you out of 11 eggs, four eggs made it to day three. Wow. Can I transfer two embryos? Uh, Jasmine, uh, tell me a little bit more about how old you are and how many times you've done this. Uh, empty follicle syndrome, I think um, I'll have to do a little bit more homework. I I'm not exactly sure if that is a true situation in 99% of the times, there may be one out of a hundred or one out of a thousand where it's a true empty follicle. Most times it's just simply, there's no egg in there and that's just the way it is. I'm 31 years old doing my first IVF, then we recommend putting one in, not two. Uh, Sherry Lynn, uh, 34, first time IVF. I have PCO and my husband's low sperm count. What is my chance for successful IVF? PCO, wow, gosh, probably around 30 to 40% with basic IVF and about 60, 50, 60% with IVF with chromosomally tested embryos. Yes, I know PCO and PCOS sometimes get mixed up. I got it. All righty. Uh, no questions. Just saying hi. Blakey Zoo, hello. Karina, I had three failed IUIs. One IVF ended in a miscarriage. No known problems on my side. Husband has low motility. He's 42. I'm 30. How can we avoid a miscarriage or try to prevent as good? So you've had three failed IUIs and one miscarriage. Well, miscarriages are normal, so there's nothing wrong. Um um, acupuncture is a good preventative, uh, avoiding alcohol, tobacco, drugs for your husband and for you, um, taking your multivitamins, look at our family building guide, uh, zero vital is something you could take, which is a, which is a complex you can get at, uh, um, Costco. Um, okay. Uh, I'm 39 years old. Is chromosomal testing a must? No. Uh, the IVF ended in a miscarriage at 10 weeks, Karina. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I would make sure they evaluate your uterus. If you had a hysteroscopy scheduled in April and was told us that I can start my cycle for retrieval right after since my period would be straight. Okay. The, I don't know. <clears throat> my DHEA is high. What number of DHEA should I have starting a mini IVF? Well, ask them to put you on um, some sort of a steroid hormone to lower your DHEA, Andrea. Um, Melody, do you transfer, recommend transferring two frozen embryos for a 40-year-old, never transferred before, didn't respond to stims? Well, if they're the only two you have, have a discussion. Karina, my pleasure. Does chromosomal testing increase success rates? Yes. The average success rate for uh, an IVF cycle for a 20-year-old is about 30 to 35%. The average for chromosomal testing is around 50%. So it kind of doubles the numbers. Uh, edit, donor embryos. No, then don't put in more than one donor embryo. Your age has, Melody, has nothing to do with your success when you're using your welcome soap when you're using donor embryos. Those who use donor use the age of the donor as the number of embryos to transfer, not your age. The uterus does not age. Tiff Crowley likes Crowell Kid's mom. Okay. Uh, I'm about 38, did mini IVF for the first time, one egg retrieved, which fertilized and was graded uh, three days transfer, good chance at implants. Yeah, do a three day transfer. Four days ago. Yes. Erica Lee, yes. You always have a zero or 100% chance of achieving a pregnancy. So guys, always dream of 100. Those percentages that you see people talk about have not anything to do with you. They have to do with populations and studies, but not you individually. Anytime you get a pregnancy rate prediction, it has to do with a population, not you. Your chances are always zero or 100. Zero or 100. In case anybody's wondering, I'm Dr. Magarelli, CNY Fertility Colorado. I'm uh, working here along with Dr. Fink and my new nurse practitioner, Brandis Montez, 
and 50 other amazing people. Amanda's on. Hi, Amanda. Good to see you. Shamika, hello. I want to know if you just have four mature follicles that is within the exact number of what they wanted. What are the successful chances of getting pregnant with just four follicles? Well, the follicles are not it. It's it, Are there eggs in there? So that's what you want to know. Uh, I am 34, stage four endometriosis, and I have one child. Great. Is there still hope for me? Absolutely. My husband wants to have a child. What would you recommend? Probably IVF if it's stage four endometriosis, stage three endometriosis, stage two, probably IVF. Michelle, testosterone gel prior to mini IVF, 35 year old with a normal AMH dual trigger. Um, yes, if, you're, if your testosterone is low, we'll have to do a lecture on testosterone. Then um, um, if your testosterone is low, then you could do supplementation. Uh, question here by Black, Black Artemis, who will give me any information on my pregimmune report? That would be only Dr. Kills. What should be the minimal beta? Don't have any idea um, because uh, every laboratory has a different level. You just ask the lab for the laboratory range for pregnancy. If you're getting any test, by the way, any test that you do, um, it's the laboratory that determines the range of what it means. Well, it's quiet again. Do you think it's better chance with assisted hatching and embryo glue? Well, Nikita, that's a controversial thing. I think most folks don't think hatching does very much. Embryo glue is somewhat controversial. We at CNY, we do both if it's needed. Um, we just include it. One only, C. Jackson. Started my monitoring, 3.8 uh, uterus lining was 2.1. Second monitor day, and my uterus lining was 5, and the follicle was 12. Going back on Friday, is my follicle at 12 good for my donor transfer? I'm 51. Hmm. Why would you want a follicle for a donor transfer? What's the most successful type of IVF? That's IVF with chromosomal testing. How accurate is the ERA? Very accurate. Uh, what is the medication Nupagen used for? Uh, my understanding is for inflammation. Uh, I tend not to prescribe Nupagen. Um, when do you recommend acupuncture? Before, during, or after IVF cycles? Yes, before, during, and after IVF cycles. Always, always. Doctor, can one do a two retrievals between two cycles before transfer? Yes. Why aren't eggs retrieved at the time of egg retrieval? Because you don't have them inside the follicle or they, they, um, the trigger timing was off? There's many reasons. Uh, most of the time, it's just advanced maternal age. Does chiropractic treatment help for fertility? You know, I don't know, Melissa. I've never done the studies. I've done all my studies on acupuncture. Uh, is there a different success rate for day three embryo transfer day five? Yes, day five would also always have a better chance of implanting because on day three, you have an undifferentiated embryo, which means we don't know heads or tails. But by day five or blastocyst, we know the baby part and the placenta part. And it's gone through the hurdle of changing into a blastocyst, much like the hurdle of a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. That's the process of blastulization. What is a mini or gentle IVF for a 41-year-old? 200 of gonalaf, 20 of um, HCGLH, 10 of letrozole, and 10,000 of HCG trigger. Nikita, I'm 41 and doing my first egg retrieval on Thursday. I have 14, 14 mature follicles. What do you think my chances are? Wonderful, actually. I have keloid skin with painful active keloids. Uh, I'm wondering if acupuncture will also cause me to scar. Actually, Jen Lin, acupuncture has been used to remove scars. So talk to the acupuncturists. They probably know better than, they do know better than I. Um, wow, lots of nice people coming into the Instagram, jumping back in there. Hello, folks. Jen Styles Hair, Forever Strong. France Garcia, 92, elder real estate. Oh, okay. Which is better, frozen or fresh? Compared to what? Um, compared to what? In every single type of treatment we have, is uh, the treatment is based on the person's particular fertility issue. Hello, France Garcia, 92, uh, Fel Felicia. 
I have endometriosis. Is my chances good with IVF? Well, the key issue there is how old are you? What is your egg score? How many children have you had? You know, those are the questions that that answer you about chances. And as I've said, chances are just zero or a hundred. Um, uh, but you can use statistics to figure out what's the best treatment option. Okay, uh, good. All right. Please ask any kind of questions, guys. Doesn't matter. I'm doing IUI next week. Trinia Finesse 56. Good. I'm 36, no kids. Eggs are good. This is Felicia. I have endometrial chances. Of, yes. 36 is about a 20% chance with basic IVF and about a 40 or 50% chance if you do genetic testing. Melissa, we purchased a lot of six eggs, only five were, only five were mature. That's amazing. And one made it to day five. That's exactly what we, we expect. Um, we used ICSI. It ended up being an ectopic. What went wrong? Nothing. Uh, bad luck for the ectopic, honestly, and I'm sorry about that. But Yep, uh, five mature, one blast to transfer. That's kind of what most of the egg banks promise based on humans. Um, do you recommend HCG wash? Yes, I do. April, I have low AMH. How many follicles would you say are enough for retrieval? Tell me how old you are, April. By the way, any question that asks me about numbers, you have to tell me your age So I ha and what your AMH is would be great. Um, Francis Garcia, 92, I want to start my IVF, but my credit score is bad. Actually, my understanding, and you might want to talk to the financial folks at uh, CNY, I don't think they look at credit scores. I don't think so. So 34, low AMH, um, you would probably have to do two or three cycles to get enough embryos to make, to find the baby. Jasmine, I'm on protocol immune too. Can I request to use Nupogen? In what circumstances do you guys prescribe Nupogen? I do not prescribe Nupogen, Jasmine. You may want to go on to Dr. Kiltz's lives and ask him. As a travel pairing, would it be okay to fly home on the same day as a transfer? No. Recommend the next day. Guys, if you get retrievals or transfers, please plan on, on staying overnight in case something happens and then go home. Possibility of having no viable eggs with PGS testing. My wife has PCOS, but that's our fear. Well, Austin, I'm sorry. You know, the, it has to do with the age of the female. So tell me her age. 42, should I do a three or five day transfer? Day three transfer with own eggs and, and or donor, then a di day five with a donor. Day three with yours, day five with a donor. Is ACG wash only for frozen transfers? Uh, no. When I did my last fresh transfer, I only did Lupron due to high progesterone. Next cycle, would you recommend HCG trigger at Lupron and do frozen? I am 32 and never been pregnant. Uh, yeah, do a double trigger for sure. Double trigger for sure. So Austin, uh, 36, uh, you have a good chance of, of getting eggs for PGS testing. Yes, my guess is your wife has lots of eggs. Uh, and again, it depends on her, her AMH. Melody, from frozen donor embryo transfer, do you recommend acupuncture? Absolutely. Acupuncture is for anyone who wants to get pregnant. Acupuncture is anyone who wants to keep the pregnancy. Acupuncture is for any male who wants to impregnate their wife. Acupuncture is good for maintaining um, the pregnancy tool term. Uh, it's been around 5,000 years. Got a lot of good stuff it can help you with. Hello, Endo. I have endometriosis, Doc, uh, has me on North Indra before IVF. Yeah, good idea. Uh, um, Mariam, uh, three retrievals, over 12, three-day embryos. Wow. 12, and only one made it to Morula. I'm 38. Why is that? I did laparoscopy on stage for endometriosis. That's the reason. Endometriosis does affect ovarian reserve, and that's an ovarian reserve issue. Following question about how to lower AMA, she said to ask your doctor about um, a, a steroid hormone like dexamethasone or prednisone. Yes. Uh, would you recommend Japanese or Chinese acupuncture? I recommend the acupuncture that you can get. Wife had 31 follicles right now. Do you retrieve all follicles? You betcha. 
How often do you recommend acupuncture? This actually is called the Credenda Magarelli Acupuncture Protocol or the CMAP Protocol. We do recommend that. Uh, it's uh, eight or nine treatments before the eggs come out, a treatment before and after the embryos go in, and two or three holding treatments after that before the pregnancy test. So it's about, oh, about 11 or 12 treatments. Does letrozole suppress estrogen? Yes. And does it have an impact on doing a day three transfer? No, uh, it could. I mean, but I, I don't know that data, but it could. I have good AMH and FSH. This is Mariam. I don't know what the question was. Um, Lily, I have a friend who would like to donate uh, eggs to you, but she lives in Ecuador and doesn't have a visa. Uh, I don't know how you can get her eggs into the United States, Lily. I don't know how. I don't know the rules on that. Wife has 31 follicles now. Do you retrieve all follicles? I thought I'd answer that, Austin. I have a good AMH. Good. Hydrosalpings doctor always wants to jump to straight to IVF. Absolutely. So if you have a hydrosalpings, it means that the fallopian tubes are not working. So don't try IUIs because the chance for ectopics go up greatly. But also get that hydrosalpings clipped because even in IVF, it's not good to have a hydrosalpings. My husband has oligoestenoteratozoospermia or oat syndrome. He's 42 and has three kids from a prior relationship. What can we do to make it better? Felicia, you need to do IVF and uh, ICSI uh, to achieve a pregnancy. He can go to do uh, acupuncture. Um, he can change his diet, avoid smoking alcohol drugs, uh, do serovital. Um, but there's not much we could do to change the sperm. Uh, no, uh, hydrosalpings, uh, Kelly, is not blocked. It's filled with fluid and is damaged. And even if you did unblock it, you, the, the, the inside of the um, fallopian tube, which is necessary to get the egg to the uterus, is damaged. So it's not likely to be functional. Um, okay. It's dry today. Not many questions out there. How can I help you? Partner with DNA fragmentation. What's the question? Partner with DNA fragmentation. IVF with ICSI takes care of that. Uh, Felicia, I'm 36, AMH is five. Is that a good or bad? That's excellent. Rebecca, I'm 35, uh, AMH of 0 0.5. How many follicles should I expect with the standard medical protocol? Three to five. Austin, should I take some of my wife's gonolith to better my sperm. Sperm tephas was good, but want them to be super sperm. No such thing, sorry to say. How much is the total cost for a 40 year old woman to get 100% pregnant? Um, no, there's no number high enough for me to give you that because there's nothing in medicine that's 100%. Uh, sent too fast. From, from my three retrievals with over 12 embryos, only one more. I had laparoscopy done on that. have good FSH. Why are my embryos don't make it past day three? It, it has to do um, with the fact that you have low ovarian reserve and because you've had endometriosis surgery. Um, is there a good chance of conceiving naturally with a proximal tubal occlusion? It's a zero chance. Uh, does any IVF meds cause blood clots? Nope. But high estrogen does. I'm 34 with an AMH of 12. Well, that self-love just means you have PCOS likely and that you have a huge ovarian reserve. It's not bad. As a matter of fact, lots of eggs are good, but you have to be managed very carefully. Um, at Delahack, I have an AMH of 0 0.1. How many eggs and what's the chance of getting pregnant? Probably one egg. And it depends on your age, your chance of getting pregnant. Um, okay. An AMH of five, is that good or bad? That's good. Yeah. What does a donor do to prepare for donating their eggs? Uh, avoid alcohol, tobacco, drugs, stay in the United States, don't get any tattoos, um, stay healthy. Uh, if partner has DNA fragmentation, can partner conceive naturally or is IVF with ICSI the only way? They can conceive, but there's a lower chance. AMH uh, test, does that tell you your ovarian reserve? Yes. 
PGTM testing, how accurate is it? Very accurate. So clomid and letrozole with the hydrosalvix is not a plan to go with. I agree. Can PGS testing cause false results with abnormalities? Absolutely. There is no test in human medicine that's 100% accurate. My wife uh, went from a 10.5 to 5.5 after priming. That's a good thing, right? I have low ovarian reserve. Well, yeah, well, it doesn't mean anything. That's the point. The priming lowered it. It doesn't change anything. But what changes is the blood flow that the priming contributed to it. Um, yeah, uh, PGT testing is only 70% accurate about normals and 99% accurate about abnormal. So it's really good to tell you that it's it's a abnormal and okay to tell you if it's normal. Frims, I had my period on March 6th and I'm still spotting. What should I do? Go to the clinic, call the clinic. They'll come in and they'll do an ultrasound and make sure you're okay. Can low ovarian reserve cause multiple miscarriages? It absolutely does. Does priming really important in improving your eggs if you had a stage four wood? Yes, I think 40 days of priming. What is priming? That's adding growth hormone and estrogen with some progesterone if you need it. Uh, and what that does is it improves blood flow to the follicles, access to eggs, and also the energetics of the eggs. If you have diagnosed with inflammation, do you think priming with, with prednisone can help you lower your inflammation? Yes, it does by definition. I have been prescribed Claritin Benetrol. What would those meds help with? A histamine reaction. So they're antihistamines. And so there was a very small few studies about giving antihistamines to infertile couples and they're getting an improved outcome. PCOS and high MH, can I do to help with a successful retrieval? Just make sure you don't hyperstimulate uh, like wild jaw. If you have been diagnosed with inflammation, okay, I already said that. What are some things I can do to better my egg quality if I have PCOS and high AMH? Well, um, growth hormone is one thing, serovital, acupuncture, a low carb diet. Um, those are things you can do. Take your vitamins, antioxidants. Yeah. Is IVF the only way to have a successful pregnancy with low ovarian reserve? It's the easiest and quickest way, not the only way. IUIs can work, the intercourse can work, but it just gets you there faster. That's the goal. Okay. All right, lots of people are joining. When you join it, two minutes before I'm done, I think you got the time wrong. Um, we start four o'clock uh, mountain time, and I don't know what time yours is. But I have about five more minutes. So if you're joining now, uh, hello, everybody. You're kind of an hour late. Uh, we start at 4 o'clock. And thanks you. Thank you, all these wonderful people, for joining. So quickly ask me some questions because no one's asked me questions on Facebook or YouTube. Oh, there it is. At what point is the process uh, is progesterone required after transfer? Well, in preparation for transfer, I should say. Um, and after transfer. Does ablation surgery for endo have an effect on ability to get pregnant? Yes. Can you please tell what to prime with uh, growth hormone, six units for at least 30 to 60 days, estrays, at least uh, one milligram twice a day for at least 30 days, acupuncture for at least 60 to 90 days. It's 6.52 p.m. in Georgia. It's it's uh, 4.52 p.m. here in the mountain. All these wonderful people are joining. So quickly ask me questions because Facebook Live is about, with Dr. Magarelli is about to go away. So um, uh, whoever is joining now, I usually do my talks at 4 p.m. mountain time. Can estrogen priming cause negative effects on embryo grading? Nope. Nope. Um, retrieval is in a few days. Can my wife eat or take anything to improve egg quality, such as salmon? Yeah, that's a good idea. But do acupuncture. Felicia had an endometrial biopsy that came back. There was concerns for chronic endometritis. I took antibiotics. Would I need to repeat biopsy before IVF? Test was done within six months. I would. Um, what 
why am I on esterase, LDN, and hydro for a retrieval? Esterase, LDN, and hydro. I don't know what that is. Sorry. The esterase certainly will improve blood flow. Low-dose naltrexone re reduces inflammation, but I don't know what that hydro is. I had an... Um, do you recommend L LDN over prednisone or the opposite to lower inflammation before egg retrieval? I actually don't think... Um, I don't have a real feel for the uh, LDN, so... You know, and uh, there's a lot of history on use of pred uh, prednisone. Is UFE good for treatment of fibroids in women? Uh, I'm not quite sure what UFE is. Uterine, don't know what that is. 34, PCOS, bias, slow count, motility, and more for the chance of successful fresh pregnancy, or do you recommend frozen transfer? Frozen transfer, yes. Lily, my pleasure, my pleasure. If fresh, does this increase my chance for miscarriage? Uh, yes, slightly. Um, anybody know what UFE is? Uterine, oh, uterine fibroid embolization. Got it. Yes, that is a good treatment. I've heard it's a good treatment. I have never done it, but I've heard it's a good treatment. Elena, 40 and less retrieval, 19 eggs. Wow, 17 mature, wow. Seven day five and one day six and two day seven. Wow. Would you recommend the FET this cycle? Hell yeah. Well, yeah, Elena, if you want to bank, you certainly can bank, but that's a lot of good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, uterine fibroid embolization. Jackie, I've had two past chemicals, only have PCOS, and I've had one past successful FET. Anything you recommend? Yes, acupuncture, serol vital, uh, growth hormone, uh, low carb eating, uh, vitamins, minerals, complexes, all that great stuff. Avoid anyone who smokes. All right, folks, um, I've got about a minute or so left. Um, thank you for joining me. Uh, I'll see if there's any come burning questions that I can answer here. I'm here every Tuesday, usually about four o'clock. Well, actually four o'clock Mountain Time. Um, I am preparing a talk on PRP of the ovary. I am preparing a talk on, um, on, uh, natural versus modified natural versus regular cycles. So lots to talk about. Um, can you do PGT testing on frozen embryos? I think you mean not eggs. Yes. Andrea, my pleasure. Hello, everybody. Yep. Send me kisses. Um, thanks for uh, all you are joining now this you're off an hour. I started this about an hour ago at 4 p.m. Mountain Time. Uh, so it's 5 p.m. now. So join at 4 p.m. Uh, you're so welcome, everybody. Please take care of yourself. Think pregnant thoughts. Um, we're here to help you. We have an amazing team with amazing people. Um, and we really want to help you create that one healthy baby. Um, if you have questions, we have about eight of these during the week. And uh, make sure you use your portal for the information and follow whatever instructions. Anyway, thanks, everybody, and uh, have a wonderful evening. This is Dr. Magarelli signing off. Thank you. Bye-bye.